Okay, so welcome to Let's Crack Meet UG English. And uh, we will be continuing with our chapter of photosynthesis. And the points which we will be talking about is structure and types of chloroplast. We did talk about structure, the basic structure of chloroplast in the previous lecture, but we will take up the same structure in little more detail so that the next step is clear. And the next step is going to be the light reaction. And in light reaction, in today's lecture, we'll be talking about non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now, before uh, we actually get started, let us check for the basic things. Is the audio clear? If the audio is clear, then we will start the session. And those who are preparing for need, they keep a track of what happens uh, in the previous year's exam. The need result is out. So I'm sure you've checked the need result, what is the cutoff and what kind of uh, scores your uh, seniors or maybe your friends, they, just, they got how many marks in biology, how many in physics, chemistry. This was, uh, this time it was in percentile. <coughs> so uh, I'm just waiting for uh, the audio check. Not audible. Okay, now let us check. Am I audible now? Is the audio clear? Very low volume, ma'am. Now check. Let us check whether the audio is clear or not. Message me so that I know. Still, it says very low volume. Okay, let me check one more time. What about others? Okay, Kunal says yes. That means is the audio clear? Am I audible? Quickly reply so that we can get started with our uh, chapter. Here at my end, it shows everything is fine. The audio should also be good. So you need to check at your end if everything is fine. Okay, reply quickly so that we are able to start. All right, so I think uh, everything is fine now and we can get started with I think there's only one amazing creativity says, no ma'am, the volume is not clear. Check at your end if everything is fine because here my system shows uh, good because Kunal is saying that you're audible. So I guess uh, you need to check at your end because here my system shows everything is fine. We are going to continue with our chapter of photosynthesis. And as I said, we'll talk about the structure and type of chloroplast first, and then we will come to the other C's. Okay, so it is now okay. You're audible, audible, audible. Very good, very good. All right, so let us get started with the, the topic that we were talking about. 
And as I told you in the beginning, need, a result is out. So you need to check with your friends, your seniors who appeared for the exam and also check the ranks which they got and it is the percentile thing. And I'm sure you have read the uh, result details. There are a couple of students who scored 100 percentile. That means they scored full marks. So this is what is our target. And to achieve that, what we need to do is we need to finish our syllabus in time. We have to have enough revision of all the chapters. And that is why I'm giving you all these course sheets for various channels where I'm taking classes. This is our channel. We are on photosynthesis chapter. Then I'm also taking classes on another YouTube channel, which is Let's Crack Neat UG. The only difference is it is Hindi English mix. Terminology is English, so should not be a problem. Then one more channel, which is uh, Biology 101. Here I have started Human Physiology. So as I said, if we are targeting a competitive exam and we want to score very, very, very good marks, we need to cover more in short period of time so that we are able to get enough time for revision. And the students who are new uh, for them, I'm Dr. Neela Bakore, your biology teacher, and we are using an academy platform, which is India's largest learning platform. And this is the app which you need to install in order to get access to all the special classes. Now these special classes are available through this app only. Now these special classes are in two categories. One are the free classes and then it is the paid which will be available to you after you take the subscription. After you join these uh, plus classes or you get this app installed, you get live or rather access to live classes of uh, various educators, the top educators who are teaching on an academy platform. And to take the subscription, you have various plans available like you can choose from a uh, one month plan to two year plan, depending upon which year need you are targeting. So suppose you are targeting 2021, so you can go for a shorter plan, like a six month plan. But if we are targeting the exam in 2022, then maybe we can decide for a long term plan. So that one, our syllabus is completed, we get enough revision, practice questions are done, quizzes are done. And whenever you get or go for the subscription, use the code so that you are able to avail that extra 10% discount, okay? So this is uh, what it is, some basic things. And Kirti, Jayant, Kunal, Jayant is now saying that you are not audible clearly. Jayant, I guess the problem is at your end because other students are able to hear me. So just check at your end. Uh, then there is one more student, Kala, Kala e R. Uh, did I say your name correctly? Hello everyone, because I'm seeing some new names today. It is too low, okay? I guess uh, because my system is showing everything fine as uh, is every day. So I guess just check at your end. All right. So I'm seeing some new names today uh, because uh, on previous days when we had the classes, we had some other students and I'm able to see some new names. Normally, like uh, Kalai says, thank you for taking my name because normally what happens is this is the advantage of the live class that, you know, it gives a feel of a classroom like uh, teaching. And once you know that the teacher is interacting with you, then only the learning becomes easier. But otherwise, it's like a monologue. The teacher is teaching and you that those doubts, they still remain with you. Okay, Rahul is saying, but every day it used to be very high. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to check at my end again for one more time before we start the class. 
So give me a minute. Okay, now tell me whether it is better. Quickly reply whether it is better so that we are able to, uh, you know, resume the lecture. Is the audio better? Jen says yes. Yes, okay. Kirti also, Kalai also. Very good. So I guess now it is fine. Very good, very good. So now let us come back to the topic that we were talking about. We are on the photosynthesis chapter and in the previous lecture we talked about structure of chloroplast which is the site of photosynthesis. Now we are going to talk about the same structure chloroplast in little more detail. So chloroplast is the site for photosynthesis. Okay, so when we talk of chloroplast, the most common shape of chloroplast is oval. It is a double membrane structure. This part we discussed in the previous lecture also, but quickly because I'm going to use two more terms on which questions were asked and these terms are not mentioned anywhere. See what happens is many a times the students who are from pure English media, they find it difficult to answer certain questions because what happens is, see, syllabus is limited, what is given in our NCRT. So how do they make complicated? They start using some uh, different words. And when those words are asked, because we have not heard that word before, uh, we are not able to answer that question and that is why whenever we explain a particular uh, structure we make sure that we have talked of or heard of those words so that is what is the main focus today now here from the inner membrane we said there are some lamellae which are called stroma lamellae and from the stroma lamellae small pieces pinch off and these pieces they get stacked over each other to form a granum so this one stack of thylakoids is called a granum. Now I'm going to make this stack separately so that we are able to understand those two words which I was just talking about. This is one thylakoid that I'm drawing here. <coughs> this is the next thylakoid and there is no space but because we want to understand the structure, that is why we are drawing it like this. Now, what is around this? If you see all around this, this is the place that we are taking the structure from. So, these are two thylakoids that I have drawn and outside is stroma. The jelly-like matrix or material which is present in the chloroplast. Now, if we have to understand those words. See, this is complete thylakoid. But if you're talking about only this much part of the thylakoid membrane, this part of the thylakoid membrane of one thylakoid is in contact with the membrane of other thylakoid. This part of the membrane of thylakoid which is in contact with the other membrane of thylakoid is known as the apressed part and then there is a part of thylakoid membrane which is not in contact with other membrane but is in contact with stroma for example if you are talking about this much part or this much part it is not in contact with the membrane of other thylakoid so this part is called non apressed part these are new terms we can say that the thylakoid membranes which are in contact with each other and the thylakoid membrane which is in contact with stroma. There are two different segments. Now why is this so important? 
it is important because in this part there are photosystems in the previous lecture we talked about photosystem a photosystem has a collection of chlorophyll then there is a reaction center chlorophyll in it and then there is a primary electron acceptor so the non apressed part has photosystem 1 and the apressed part has photosystem 2 this is very 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 important because in the next lecture we will be talking about chemiosmotic theory and that is where this thing is going to be very essential so ps1 photosystem 1 is in the non apressed part that means the part which is in contact with stroma and the part which is in contact with uh, contact with the other membrane has ps2 so if we have to write that thylakoid membrane has which photosystem our answer is going to be ps1 and ps2 both because the membrane apressed or non apressed both the membranes are mem membranes of thylakoid but these thylakoid membranes which are like in contact with each other that is the apressed part has ps2 and the free one have ps1 but if you're talking about thylakoid membrane they have both okay now let us label this structure this is called stroma lamellae stroma lamellae and stroma lamellae have only ps1 now why this is important because when the questions are asked like non-cyclic photophosphorylation takes place where and cyclic takes place where at that time these things are going to help us in answering the question so what is in the thylakoid membrane ps1 and ps2 what is the location ps2 is in the apressed part and ps1 is in the non-apressed part this part is clear then we said chloroplast is a semi autonomous organelle it has its own dna and it also has ribosomes and these ribosomes are 70s type of ribosomes so structure part is clear these stroma lamellae they arise from the inner membrane in the form of tube like structure and then from this major tube that is stroma lamellae small pieces detach and those detached pieces they just stay close to each other they make a stack and this one part is a thylakoid so this is one thylakoid Is this part clear uh, PS1 and PS2 is yes on the basis of chlorophyll A which particular wavelength is absorbed 700 or 680 all right now so the structure of chloroplast is now clear we have introduced two terms one is the apressed part and second is non apressed part not only that now we know which photosystem is present in the apressed part and which is present in the non apressed we now also know that what is on the thylakoid membrane and what is on the stroma lamellae okay so this is about chloroplast now let us come to the types how many types of chloroplast have we heard of there are two types of chloroplasts and that is why chloroplasts are called dimorphic two types and so they are called dimorphic di is to morph is form so there are two types which are these two types of chloroplasts and where do we find them one is called granule chloroplast 
and the second is known as a granal chloroplast grana we know what is a granum granum is that stack of thylakoid so a chloroplast which has a grana has grana and a granal is without grana so what will be the difference <clears throat> suppose we just make that chloroplast double membrane structure and here we will have those grana stacks of thylakoid rest everything is going to be same like stroma and dna and ribosomes are there and a granal would be this double membrane dna everything and there are only stroma lamellae no grana and that is why it is called a granal chloroplast now when we are talking about these two types of chloroplasts where exactly are they located granal chloroplasts are the normal ones they are located in the mesophyll cells of c3 plants see it is a basic thing if grana are present in a chloroplast which has both grana and stroma both what will happen light reaction will take place here and dark reaction will take place here but this is grana the second chloroplast which has only stroma that means only dark reaction will take place here grana if are absent that means pigments are not there because chlorophyll and the other pigments are found in the thylakoid membrane we just now wrote that there are uh, ps1 and ps2 so maximum uh, the pigments which are found they are in a thylakoid membrane so mesophyll cells what are mesophyll cells suppose this is a leaf structure the upper epidermis lower epidermis the cells which are in between here they are called mesophyll cells these are parenchyma cells or chloranchyma cells so they would have these cells what is meant by c3 plants c3 plants are the plants in which when dark reaction takes place the first stable compound is a three carbon compound if we are talking about c3 then we should also know about c4 plants so these granal chloroplasts are also found in mesophyll cells of c4 plants now where are these a granal found a granal uh, chloroplasts are found in bundle sheath cells of c4 plants now this part will be clear once we understand what exactly is c3 c4 cycle and then we also know how are these two cycles different and why are they different so for the time being we just need to remember the location once we understand the process this will be automatically clear all right so two types of chloroplast and that is why we are calling it dimorphic chloroplast okay location we have written now once we finish c3 c4 cycles we will again talk about these two types of chloroplast so site of photosynthesis is clear that is chloroplast we also know the types of chloroplast which we would need when we talk of c3 and c4 cycle now let us come to light reaction we know photosynthesis is completed in two steps one is light dependent step and the second is light independent step the light dependent step is commonly known as light reaction it is technically or chemically what exactly is happening is photo phosphorylation phosphorylation is addition of phosphate so if you break this word phosphorylation is addition of phosphate and photo 
word is for light so when there is addition of phosphate in presence of light then that is called photophosphorylation so light reaction is nothing but photophosphorylation now when we are talking of this photophosphorylation there are two possible methods of photophosphorylation one is cyclic and the second is non cyclic what exactly happens in photophosphorylation or light reaction in light reaction in presence of sunlight now when i write sunlight do we know that specific part it is the visible spectrum can we use some other word for it we use photosynthetically active radiation so in this particular uh, wavelength or in this particular band photosynthesis is going to take place so photons are absorbed by pigments because of this electrons get excited when electrons get excited they jump to higher energy level electrons jump to higher energy levels and now when they come down the electron is brought down through electron transport chain electron is brought back to its normal energy level through electron transport chain and in this process atp is synthesized now how is atp synthesized atp is adenosine triphosphate the structure which i have made is adp diphosphate and if you watch it carefully this first bond which i have made is in the form of a straight line and the second bond is a wavy line wavy line represents a bond which has energy so if this bond breaks it is going to release energy now if this adp has to undergo phosphorylation that means addition of phosphate so inorganic phosphate will be added to it now when inorganic phosphate is added a bond has to be formed and for that energy is required so from where is this energy coming this energy is those photons okay so now adenosine one phosphate second phosphate and the third phosphate is also added this is atp so this is how phosphorylation takes place and it is taking place in presence of sunlight so you call it photophosphorylation now photophosphorylation or light reaction can be completed in two pathways there are two pathways the first is called non cyclic photo phospho rylation and the second one is called cyclic photo phosphorylation photophosphorylation is common in both one is non cyclic and the second is cyclic and we know cyclic means the place where it starts from the same place it should end and non cyclic means it starts at one point and somewhere else non cyclic is the predominant pathway normally 80 to 85% pathway which is followed is non cyclic and the remaining 15 20 is this we will realize this after we discuss this so 15 to 20% is this 
So let us come to the major pathway, the one which is predominantly followed non-cyclic photophosphorylation once we understand this then we are going to write down some important points or some important things which take place during this pathway non-cyclic photophosphorylation as i told you it is the predominant photophosphorylation it involves both photosystems ps1 ps2 both are there and if we are talking of PS1 and PS2 both, then we are talking about thylakoid membrane because PS2 is in the apressed part and PS1 is in the non-apressed part. So we are not drawing the membrane, we are just talking about the pathway. And this pathway is given one more name, that name we will write after we understand the pathway. So let us start this. This is our photosystem. And here we will draw it like this. The one which is in the center is the reaction center chlorophyll. See, we have studied this in detail and that is why we are not going to label all the parts here. And this is the reason why I told you that you have to go over the structure because now when we take a bigger pathway, all those minor details cannot be labeled here. So I have differentiated these, this central one which is shown as a thicker cell, uh, the thicker molecule that is reaction center chlorophyll and the others which are around it are the accessory pigments. In accessory pigments there can be chlorophyll B, C, D or even phycobilins or even carotenoids, anything. And now we have to show its reaction center chlorophyll with its primary electron acceptor. I'm showing that primary electron acceptor at a higher level so that we remember that the electron is getting excited to higher energy level and from the chlorophyll the electron will get excited it will be accepted by primary electron acceptor so here I'm going to write all the abbreviations that we are using this is primary electron acceptor okay we, we will have more uh, abbreviations here now when sunlight falls on these chlorophyll molecules so we have to show this sunlight here what about this particular photosystem which we have drawn this photosystem is PS2. So non-cyclic photophosphorylation involves both photosystems, PS1 and PS2, but the pathway starts with PS2. Now if it is PS2, what is our reaction center chlorophyll pigment? It is P6AT. This we talked of when we talked of two photosystems. So as soon as I write PS2, what is the hidden message? That PS2 has reaction center chlorophyll that is 680, which absorbs 680 nanometers. It has accessory pigments and it has its own primary electron acceptor. So now when the sunlight falls on it, what is going to happen? When the sunlight falls on, these pigments, these pigments are going to absorb photons depending upon their capacity, pass it on to the next pigment and ultimately all that will be passed on to the reaction center chlorophyll. So all the energy in the form of photons absorbed by various pigments has been collected and has been sent to reaction center chlorophyll. Now when reaction center chlorophyll gets enough energy from its atom, a pair of electron gets excited. A pair is getting excited. 
one pair of electron now this pair of electron is accepted by the primary electron acceptor that means the electron pair which is with the primary electron acceptor is with higher energy now this electron pair from its higher energy level will be passed through an electron transport chain so electron transport chain has electron acceptors so there are three electron acceptors in this chain so this is electron transport chain so a pair of electron passes from higher energy level then comes here then comes here what are these electron acceptors the first here is written as pq now what is pq here it is plastoquinone the second is written as cytochrome complex it is written as cy complex it is cytochrome complex and this is the most important one and then the next one is written as pc which means plastocyanin plastocyanin these are the three electron acceptors in the electron transport chain now when the electron passes through the this electron transport chain at cytochrome it releases that energy that extra energy which it had so it releases that energy and that energy is used to add inorganic phosphate to adp and when inorganic phosphate is added what is happening is phosphorylation okay and atp is synthesized that means the solar energy has been converted into chemical energy and what has happened is by using the solar energy electrons were made to move from lower energy level to higher energy level now when they are brought back to the normal energy level they are brought back through an electron transport chain and at a particular position they release that extra energy that they have and that energy is used to synthesize one atp molecule now what has happened to those electrons which are here the electrons they with their minimum energy level now are accepted by the photosystem so here there is one more photosystem let us draw that photosystem this is again chlorophyll molecule reaction center chlorophyll which is shown in the center accessory pigments and this also has its own primary electron acceptor and this photosystem which we have drawn is actually ps1 so what is ps1 or which is the reaction center chlorophyll in ps1 is p700 so the reaction that is non cyclic photophosphorylation it starts with ps2 but involves both photosystems so first is going to be ps2 and then is going to be ps1 so now this electron with the minimum energy has finally reached ps1 now what is happening on ps1 on ps1 also there is this sunlight because when light falls it falls on the complete structure so there is light on ps1 there is light on ps2 and here also the same thing is going to happen that means all those accessory pigments will absorb the photons and these photons will be passed on to the reaction center chlorophyll
Now when this reaction center chlorophyll gets enough photons, from that reaction center chlorophyll again a pair of electrons would get excited. Again one pair gets excited. It is accepted by the primary electron acceptor of PS1 and then this passes through one more electron acceptor which is called it is written as FD that is pyridoxin. abbreviation is FD it is called pyridoxin. So there is only one uh, electron acceptor in case of PS1 <clears throat> and now this electron is given to NADP. So finally the pair of electrons reaches NADP. Now why are we calling it non-cyclic? The electron pair which left PS2 did not come back to PS2. So it is non-cyclic. If we talk of cyclic that means if an electron leaves a photosystem it comes back to that photosystem. So here the electron leaves from PS2 but never comes back to PS2. Now there is going to be a problem. If from this PS2 a pair of electron leaves if from an atom electron is lost that atom changes into an ion and the properties of atoms and ions are different. So in other words our chlorophyll molecule structure is going to change because if atoms change into ions the chlorophyll molecule is not going to behave in the same manner. So there has to be a mechanism by which those two lost electrons can be replaced and that is done by a process which is called photolysis. Photolysis is splitting of water in presence of sunlight. So here sunlight is going to help in splitting of water also. And that is why the process is called photolysis. Photolysis. Splitting of water in the presence of sunlight. And for this process to take place, manganese ions are required. Very essential. And when water splits, what do we get? A pair of electrons, a pair of protons <coughs> and one atom of oxygen. So it is written as half O2. If you double it, like if you start with 2H2O, we will get four, pair, four electrons means two pairs now, here one pair, two pairs of protons and one oxygen molecule. So we can double it because half O2 means one atom and we know one atom of oxygen is known as nascent oxygen and it's highly reactive. So you can double it. Now this electron pair is given to this chlorophyll is the loss made up when sunlight falls on PS2 a pair of electron is lost and this is going to be a continuous process. So if this chlorophyll of PS2 keeps losing electrons like this the atoms are going to change into ions and this will affect the properties of chlorophyll. So there has to be a mechanism by which those lost electrons are replaced and this is done by photolysis of water. So one pair of electron coming from water has been sent to chlorophyll 2. Its loss is made up. 
oxygen which is given out is the by product it will be released now what is done with this proton pair so the protons which are lost or what which are released here this pair of protons is actually sent and given to this NADP so NADP has received a pair of electrons and a pair of protons and now this NADP gets reduced into NADPH2 which can also be written as NADPH plus and H plus and this is the reducing power reducing power so what is achieved by this process by this process ATP is generated and reducing power is generated and both these things are required for dark reaction now why are we calling it light reaction because it is dependent on sunlight if no sunlight nothing is going to happen why are we calling it phosphorylation because there is addition of phosphate why are we calling it photophosphorylation because this phosphate gets added as a result of what happens during due to sunlight and why are we calling it non cyclic because the pair of electron which is lost from ps2 never comes back to ps2 now this is the complete description of non cyclic photophosphorylation now let me know if this pathway is clear if this is clear then we will come to the important points which are to be written down or if there is a doubt we can quickly go over it ma'am are all prokaryotes identical no they are not because when we talk of prokaryotes we talk about many things we talk of mycoplasma we talk of eubacteria we talk of archaebacteria we talk of cyanobacteria so there is a difference but there is a major similarity that is they do not have any membrane bound structure uh, this half leaf experiment we will discuss uh, later but here I'm, my concern is about this one so have you understood this particular part non cyclic photophosphorylation because this is very very important okay so now let me know if this part is clear Jen says yes it is clear what about others do you have any doubt in this the electron transport chain why this photolysis is essential okay crystal clear Kalai that's very good thank you crystal clear amazing creativity ma'am uh, part once more ATP stick hai ATP aur ek baar bata dete hain Rahul is asking this question about ATP see what happens is when light falls on chlorophyll it can be any chlorophyll right accessory pigments now all these pigments they start gathering or uh, absorbing photons light is absorbed in the, that unit which is called a photon depending upon their capacity once they collect those photons they have to pass it on to the reaction center chlorophyll once reaction center chlorophyll gets enough photons from an atom of that reaction center chlorophyll one pair of electron will get excited excited means it goes from lower energy level to higher energy level 
why were they able to move from lower to higher because of those photons that means solar energy has helped those electrons to move from lower energy level to higher energy level so far okay now when those high energy level electrons are accepted by this primary electron acceptor there are two possibilities either we send those electrons out or we pass them in a very systematic manner through electron transport chain and what happens in plant is this high energy electron pair is passed through the electron transport chain now when it is coming from higher level to lower level at one step it releases that energy and that energy is used to add inorganic phosphate to ADP now see if this is adenosine it is diphosphate this is one phosphate it has one more phosphate diphosphate now if you want that one more phosphate should join here then there has to be energy for this bond formation and that energy is the one which is released when the electron is coming down the gradient and this phosphate gets added this is how ATP is synthesized okay Rahul so ATP part is it clear others uh, for some of them it is crystal clear no doubts only Rahul wanted to know okay Rahul I'm happy you understood this all right so this part is clear now if we have to sum this up in short what exactly is happening in non-cyclic photophosphorylation these are the important points which we have to remember what are those points number one it is called Z scheme now why are we calling it Z scheme Z scheme word is given because of the pathway shape now this will be clear once you understand where exactly this is happening so it has this kind of shape so this is why it is known as Z scheme PS1 PS2 both are involved we have seen but it starts with PS2 site of non cyclic photophosphorylation where is this going to happen this takes place in thylakoid membrane thylakoid membrane uh, we now know that PS2 and PS1 both are involved so where is PS2 located it is located in the apparest part and PS1 is located in the non apparest part so now we know the exact location where this non cyclic photophosphorylation is taking place it will be even more clear when we talk of chemiosmosis then photolysis of water what is meant by photolysis this is splitting of water in presence of sunlight and what is produced as a result of the splitting that reaction we have written it splits into a pair of electrons a pair of protons and half O2 we can write it double you can write it as 2H2O splits into four electrons four protons and O2 it is like you know if you want to show more because what is given out is molecular oxygen so here byproduct that is oxygen is given out and for photolysis of water what are the two important things which are required one is sunlight because it is photo and second is manganese ions it is very very essential where 
where does this photolysis of water take place it takes place in the lumen of thylakoid lumen of thylakoid now this will be clear when we talk of chemiosmosis now what is this chemiosmosis i have used this term two three four times let us come back to this in this diagram or in this flow chart of non-cyclic photophosphorylation this atp production which is taking place at cytochrome is actually chemiosmosis so let us now talk about this chemiosmosis what is this chemiosmosis chemiosmosis means atp generation due to a proton gradient those who have studied this probably they have understood what i'm trying to say but those who are uh, doing it for the first time you can just leave it for some time in the next lecture i'm going to be talking about chemiosmotic theory in detail so at that time this part will be clear how where this proton gradient is then how is this proton gradient ultimately resulting into atp synthesis and so on so for the time being you have to just remember that when atp is synthesized at cytochrome that particular process is called chemiosmosis or chemiosmotic theory we will take that up in detail in the next lecture okay so important points now we know it is known as z scheme because of the shape of that pathway both ps1 ps2 are involved but it starts with ps2 site we know where ps2 is located where ps1 is located we also understand what is photolysis why is it essential electrons are to be replaced protons are used to generate reducing power and oxygen as a byproduct is given out chemiosmosis just in short because we have to talk about this in detail now what is the outcome what do we get as a result of this for non-cyclic photophosphorylation atp is synthesized that is chemical energy or here we can say solar energy is converted into chemical energy atp is synthesized then reducing power is also ready reducing power is synthesized and this reducing power is required to reduce carbon dioxide in dark reaction what is the byproduct molecular oxygen is given out as a byproduct and this oxygen oxygen comes from water it comes from splitting of water so the oxygen which is given out is actually coming from water molecule and this was also experimentally proved enzymes now this i'm just giving you the information and i'm putting an asterisk here so that we know ki this part has to be done in chemiosmosis location there are two enzymes one is called nadp reductase and the second is the enzyme for photo lysis of water this enzyme is located on the outer membrane of outer membrane means outer side of the membrane outer side of membrane of thylakoid and this is located on the inner side of thylakoid membrane okay where is this nadph2 that is reducing power produced it is produced in stroma 
and where is oxygen produced it is produced in the lumen of thylakoid again the points which i have marked are the points where we need to understand chemi osmotic theory okay so our discussion has to be uh, in relation to what we are talking about let us not deviate from our topic and uh, okay so uh, in case if you have any doubt let me know so that we can go over this in this particular part is there any doubt if you have understood this then the next part that is cyclic photophosphorylation and chemi osmotic theory will be easier for us no doubts very good that i got one message which says uh, no doubt that's very nice but i would suggest that go over this entire process go over the important points one more time and read it from ncrt also so that you are able to understand that bookish language because in competitive exam many a times that bookish language is used so what we have done is we have understood the process but when you read it from the book the ncrt then it will be even better for you so now that text which is given in the book will become very easy for you to understand jayant also says all clear all right so i'll see you now on monday same time that is our class is going to be at 11 and we will continue with the same thing but now we will start with non cyclic photophosphorylation and um, then we will come to chemi osmotic theory uh there is a question let me take that rahul says ma'am can a plant grow in presence of a bulb that means if you light a bulb that is when you're talking about yes it is possible but over a period of time the rate of photosynthesis is going to get affected because the bulb is not going to provide all types of a wavelength so it is going to perform photosynthesis and that is how the indoor plants survive but when you keep the indoor plants you can keep them inside but in a week's time in a, in 10 days time you have to expose it to the natural sunlight so in case if a particular wavelength is missing in that art artificial light that can be uh, taken from the natural source okay all right so uh, this is about non cyclic photophosphorylation and before we finish i need to remind you that decide for the subscription as early as you can so that you can join the special classes the plus classes which are going to start very soon and when you take the subscription don't forget to use the code so that you are able to get that discount okay so wish you a very happy weekend but do revise and i'll see you on monday okay till then take care bye bye